Hi, this is Mrs. Basin, and today we're going to talk about titrations. So in this class, you're going to focus on what are called acid-base titrations. So when you have an acid-base titration, um, a, it's a procedure that allows you to figure out the concentration of a solution. So the way these work is you have a solution that has a known concentration or a known molarity, and you react it with another solution that has an unknown concentration or unknown molarity. When you're doing these acid-base reactions, you react it until you reach what is called the equivalence point when the H plus and the OH minus are equally reacted. In order for this to work, you have to know the concentration of one of the two substances. When you carry out a titration, you use a standard solution called a titrant, and this is the one that has the known concentration. This is placed in a piece of equipment called a burette. This is then added drop by drop to your unknown solution, which is in a flask or a beaker below the burette. The equivalence point is the point you reach where there's a very rapid change in pH. And this is where the H plus and the OH minus are equivalent. The end point is a term used to represent the change in color of the indicator. So you're going to carry out some of these titrations next week, um, but there's and there's a couple different pieces of this that you'll need. So this is what a titration setup will look like, and you'll do some titrations next week. Um, but you can see the burette that contains the standard solution. You can see the flask that contains your unknown. Um, a pH meter is good to have, and if you're using an indicator, the indicator will be in the flask in the bottom. So when you complete a titration and you collect the pH at different intervals, you generate something called a pH curve or a titration curve. So this shows you the graph of the titration. Um, when you set one of these up, the volume of the titrant that's added goes on the x-axis and the pH goes on the y-axis. The equivalence point is the middle of that vertical line. So as the reaction proceeds, you'll see a change in pH. And then when it hits that equivalence point, um, you'll get that kind of almost straight line in the middle, and then it will proceed from there. When you have a polyprotic acid, a polyprotic acid or base is something that has more than one proton. So something like HCl would be what's called a monoprotic acid because it only has one proton, but a polyprotic acid could be like H2SO4, um, H3PO4, those would be polyprotic acids. Um, and these can lose more than one of those hydrogen ions. So when you look at a graph of a polyprotic titration, every time it loses one of those H pluses, you hit an equivalence point. So like for this graph here that we're looking at, this would be a diprotic acid um, because there are two equivalence points. So every time one of those H um, ions is lost, you would hit an equivalence point. In this class, you're going to focus on monoprotic titration. So you'll only have that one straight line or that one equivalence point. So what we're gonna focus on first is learning how to do the titration calculations, and then um, you'll do a simulation of a titration, and then next week you'll go back to lab and you'll do the actual titration in lab. So when you solve a titration problem, you're gonna write and balance the reaction first. So this is a stoichiometry problem. So if you remember from stoichiometry, one of the most important things you do is you have to have a balanced equation to start because that shows you the relationship between the substances in the reaction. And when you carry out a titration, it is a chemical your reaction. You're reacting two different substances. So we're always gonna start these with a balanced equation. Then you're gonna use solution stoichiometry to figure out your missing information. When you solve for these, you can either solve for the concentration of the unknown, which is usually what you do when you're doing a lab, or if you have other data, you can solve for the volume needed to reach the equivalence point. So we'll go through how to solve for the concentration. We'll also go through how to solve for the volume, because those are the two different types that you're gonna practice solving today. Okay, so in this first example, um, this one says, in a titration, you have 27.4 milliliters of a standard solution, which is barium hydroxide. It's added to a 20 milliliter sample of hydrochloric acid. The concentration of the standard solution is 0 0.0154 molar. We want to know what is the molarity of the acidic solution. Okay, so when you're doing these you're going to get three out of the four pieces of information you need. So 
Like we said a second ago, before you can do anything, you need to write out the balance equation. So we're going to start with that. So my reactants are barium hydroxide and HCl. So I have BaOH2 reacting with HCl, and these are like double replacement reactions. So they're going to switch partners. So the Ba is going to combine with the Cl, and you're going to do crisscross charges, just like you always do. So plus two, minus one. And then you get HOH, which is the same as H2O. Then from there, I'm going to balance it. So I need a two there and a two there. Okay, so that's one of the first steps is to write out that balance equation because you can't do anything without the balance equation. Then what I'm going to do over to the side here, well, actually, I'm going to do this underneath. I'm going to write down the information they give me about each of the substances. So it says I have 27.4 milliliters of barium hydroxide. So I'm going to put 27.4 milliliters under the barium hydroxide. Um, and it's added to 20 milliliters of HCl. Then it tells me the concentration of the standard solution, and the standard solution it tells me was the barium hydroxide is 0 0.0154 molar. I want to know what is the molarity of the acidic solution. Okay, so again, there's going to be four pieces of information total here. They're going to give you three out of the four. So they gave me the volume and the molarity of the base they gave me the volume of the acid and I'm solving for the molarity of the acid. So when you set these up, when you set up your solution stoichiometry, you're always going to start with the volume of the substance that you know more about. So in this case, I know more information about the base. So I'm going to start with the volume of the base. Another thing that's really important when you're doing these calculations is to make sure you label everything, just like back when you did stoichiometry. Labeling things will kind of keep you focused and make sure that you're putting things in the right place as you work through the stoichiometry. Okay, so I'm gonna start with 27.4 milliliters of barium hydroxide. And then I'm gonna change that to liters. Now you could do that before you even put it into this bracket, but I'm gonna put this all in, in this first bracket so we can see where this all comes from. Okay, the other thing we wanna remember is that when we have molarity, big M is equal to moles over liters. So if I have a molarity, that molarity, so this 0 0.0154 is 0 0.0154 moles per one liter. So I can use the molarity as a conversion factor to get from volume to moles. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So I have 0 0.0154 moles per one liter of BaOH2. Okay, so what I've done here is I've gotten rid of milliliters, I've gotten rid of liters, now I'm in moles. Okay, again, if you remember from stoichiometry, this is the point where you can switch from one substance to the other using the mole ratio from the balanced equation. So in this case, there are two moles of HCl for every one mole of barium hydroxide. Those numbers, again, come from the balanced equation. Two moles of HCl for every one mole of barium hydroxide. Okay, now when we're solving for concentration, I'm going to stop my stoichiometry at moles. Because concentration, again, what I need for molarity is I need moles per liter of solution. So I'm going to solve for moles, then I'm going to use my volume to get the final concentration. Okay, so in this case, if I work through, I'm going to multiply going across, so 27.4 times 1 times 0 0.0154 times 2 divided by 1,000 times 1 times 1. So this stoichiometry is the same as what you've done before. So this gives me 8.44 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of HCl. Since I want molarity, I have to divide that by liters of HCl. 
So I know up here I have 20 milliliters of HCl. And if you remember, 20 milliliters, one liter is 1,000 milliliters that I actually have 0 0.02 liters of HCl. So I'm gonna take this 8.44 times 10 to the negative fourth divided by 0 0.02 liters. So then when I divide that, I get 0 0.0422 molar HCl. So that's my concentration of my unknown. Okay, so let's talk through that one more time if you like. So I first started out with my balanced equation. Then I labeled everything that it gave me. So it told me I had 27.4 milliliters of the standard and I had the molarity of the standard. So I put that underneath the barium hydroxide. I knew I had 20 milliliters of the acid or the HCl, but I didn't know the molarity. That's what I was solving for. So I'm gonna start with the volume of the substance I know more about. So barium hydroxide, I had both the volume and the concentration, so that's what I started my problem with. Converted milliliters to liters, then used the molarity to convert to moles, used the mole ratio from the balanced equation to get to moles of acid, once I had moles of acid, I divided by liters of acid after converting milliliters that was given, that gives me my final molarity, okay? So that's the general path that you're gonna follow anytime the question is asking for concentration. Okay, so the other type you might have to do is solving for volume. So this one says, how many milliliters of a 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution would it take to reach the equivalence point of a titration with 35.7 milliliters of an HCl solution with a molarity of 0.25 molar? Again, I'm gonna start this by writing out my balanced equation. So sodium hydroxide is reacting with hydrochloric acid. I'm gonna get sodium chloride. Again, this is a double replacement reaction and HOH, which is the same as H2O. This one ends up being balanced the way it is. I'm gonna list the information that's given in the problem. So it asks me how many milliliters so I don't know how many milliliters of NaOH I need, but it does tell me it's 0 0.10 molar solution. And then for the HCl, it says I have 35.7 milliliters and a molarity of 0.25. Okay, so now that I have that listed, I know that the hydrochloric acid is the one I have more information about. So that tells me I'm going to start this out with the volume of the hydrochloric acid. So this one's gonna start very similar to the last one. So I'm gonna start with the volume of the HCl, and I'm gonna change it to liters. And again, you could do that before you put it into your brackets. Then I'm gonna use the molarity, because again, remember molarity is moles over liters. So that's gonna be 0.25 moles of HCl per one liter of HCl. Now that I'm in moles, I can use my mole ratio to get to NaOH. And in this case, it's a one to one. So there's one mole of NaOH for every one mole of HCl. And then the last thing I need, this one I can actually do all in one complete problem. You could stop if you want, but I'm gonna show you how to do it all in one um, step here. So the last thing I want is I want to know the milliliters of NaOH. Again, this molarity I know is moles over liters. So what I can do with that, moles of NaOH is on top. So I can say there's 0 0.10 moles of NaOH per one liter of solution. Okay, and again, that came from here because the molarity, again, can be substituted as moles over liters, just like we did with this. The reason I use the NaOH here is because if I look at what canceled, I was trying to get the moles of NaOH to cancel. Okay, now this one I'm actually gonna take one step further because it wants to know how many milliliters. So instead of stopping at liters, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this out in milliliters. Then once I've done my math here, I'll have the answer to my question. Okay, so same thing here. Multiply across, divide top to bottom. 
This one you end up with 89.3 milliliters of NaOH. Okay, so just like always, lots of practice with these is what's gonna help. Start out with the balance equation, write down all the information you have, start with the volume of the one you know more about, you're gonna change the volume, you're gonna go to moles, go to moles of the other substance, and then either use the moles to get concentration or go to volume of the other substance, depending on what it's asking for. Okay, so those two example problems are the two main types that you're gonna to have to complete. Um, so you can use those as you start working through this. Um, and then, like I said, you're gonna do, on Friday, you'll do a lab simulation with this. So you'll get a little more practice with the practical use of the, the calculation. And then you'll actually go back into lab next week um, and do a titration so you can see how this all works um, in lab.